Hey everybody, welcome um, to this uh, webinar on Accelerating Manufacturing Insights with AI Powered Data Analysis. We're gonna walk through sort of some concepts. We'll try not to make this too salesy, but we'll show you how we do it. And we can even discuss if you want uh, how other people are doing this um, today. But we try to keep these short 15 or so minutes uh, everybody's busy, but try to give you some real value in the content uh, that we're going to show here. So uh, I'm going to start by just giving you a little quick overview of Praxi. As I said, just a few slides, and we'll dive into the examples about how manufacturing companies are customers and generally some other concepts around how folks are, are doing this acceleration. Um, so moving on, uh, Praxi is an AI workspace for business. We do all kinds of uh, solutions around AI. Specifically, uh, there's a lot in lean and manufacturing. Uh, my background coming out of SAP and the manufacturing group, we do a lot in manufacturing, but the platform is quite capable of uh, providing solutions across multiple areas in the business. We do work across sales and marketing, uh, doing analysis as well, but we're going to focus on how we can uh, really optimize insights, specifically probably around downtime analysis and quality today. Uh, uh, the kinds of problems we solve, we'll take all of this different data. What I noticed uh, when, we, when I was at SAP and, and other companies was that every manufacturer has kind of a sea of data in different formats. So they might have an ERP system, an MES system, but then they've got, you know, Excel sheets covering all kinds of work or ad hoc processes or homegrown work that's in databases. So what we do is we access all of that data. We have a unique architecture I'll talk about that makes this quite easy for us. Uh, we then do the analysis and this kind of issues, root causes, suggestions, hypothesis, all of this comes out of the AI. <laughs> and then finally, we automate new processes with human in the loop workflows. And those could be different applications from lean huddle boards to work order systems to really project, whatever you need. And we can build those quite rapidly based on our unique technology. We have out of the box, you know, over 150, I think is the latest count applications across manufacturing areas and others, um, and uh, over 400 type of templates that you can use. And it's growing very rapidly. We're in fact, uh, in the next couple of months coming out with solutions that allow you to design them yourselves very, very rapidly. Um, we also have a full agentic workflow backbone so that you can build workflows for approvals, automations, even talking to third-party agents uh, to do different work. So we're really offering a full solution for not only digitization, but AI analysis, as well as automation, all in one solution set that you can work with your whole stack. So if you think of it from the, we have the data layer, the execution layer with the existing applications, and then we do the ana analysis as well as filling those, what we call gap apps, those, those things that are all in Excel sheets or you guys built specifically that you need to get uh, new solutions on. So um, that's kind of the way to think of Praxi at the top of that layer, doing all the analysis, automation, orchestration, and filling the, the gaps in your workflows with applications. All right, so let me uh, jump into manufacturing. What we're going to do is let's talk about the concept of what you can do with AI-powered data analysis in manufacturing. Uh, there are a number of different types of solutions uh, that can sit on top of your data. One is just general analytics. I'll show you a couple of examples of that where you're doing production monitoring or quality indicators, those types of things. Now, there's a difference between um, what traditional dashboards and Power BI, they're quantitative. They're saying, okay, here's how many widgets had errors or first pass yield issues, et cetera. Um, what the AI can do is add um, um, an analytical information on, on top of that. What are the root causes? Um, uh, what are the hypotheses around why this is happening? Those types of things. So we're going to walk through that. Predictive analytics, this has been around a long time. Um, I used to run IoT at SAP. And, um, you know, we were doing a lot of this uh, machine learning type of uh, issues, vibration analysis, moisture, all those types of things. And the machine learning can track those and let, the, let you know predictively when you're moving out of uh, the types of ranges that will cause issues. Now, th this is a really interesting area to me because traditionally large language models, the chat GPTs and the Google uh, Gemini's and those types of things and Claude have not been in this space, but we're finding more and more that they can handle this type of work. We do it totally differently. Um, and I'll walk you through that. But basically the difference is you look for what the baseline is and you can do that either with machine learning or with large language models on the data feeds. And then you, know, then you track when those things are getting out of baseline and that gives you the predictive intelligence of knowing when things might fail or when it might cause issues. Uh, automated decision making. So based on the feeds and the information and the, the information coming into the large language model, 
you can train the model or direct the model to make certain decisions based on certain criteria. And we'll show you some examples of that. And then finally, quality optimization. This one's quite obvious, but we do downtime analysis, quality analysis. This tells you, you know, the, not only that you are having too many defects, but it can help analyze and come up with hypotheses and testing to figure out exactly what's causing that. And all of those can generate quite, you know, solid ROI if you implement these. So let's jump into a demo. I'm going to show you a few different things. I'll start with uh, the command center. And this gives you an overview of the types of things that can be done um, by doing AI analysis. So this command center, yeah, we call this the role navigator. We often will implement solutions that give every member of the team solutions and access to, to AI as well as operational workflows, those gap apps I was talking about. So in this case, you know, at an executive level, they have particular issues that you're trying to address, what can AI, AI do for them? If we go back to the role navigator, you can see that at the executive level, they might just have a dashboard with key KPIs and indicators and things like that. But as you move to the plant manager, et cetera, uh, an AI daily brief for them might have, here's the core issues that you're seeing across uh, the plant. And you can do this by integrating the data into a single environment. You don't have to move the data, we just need to be able to talk to it or have your AI system talk to it. And it can generate really the key issues that are going on in the plant and give that executive level view. You can do the same in production, quality, I'll jump into quality here. So this type of AI analytical um, uh, daily brief uh, can be incredibly helpful to help that executive know what they should look at. So in here, you know, critical issues on assembly line B, and then they can actually look at the app that is tracking escalations. They can jump into any of these escalations as a priority, et cetera. Same with maintenance. I might be getting, you know, what are the daily downtime issues? Um, where, where are the things that I need to be looking at, et cetera? So these type of um, daily briefs are, are incredibly powerful and useful to executives or managers at any level. And then you can also jump into the safety audits or incident managers or or AUDA A3s or Kaizen's or whatever the, the standard processes you're using or work orders. So all of this can be organized however you'd like with the dashboards and the uh, operational daily briefs giving you the, the, the and your managers the things they really need to look at. So that's the first uh, sort of how analysis can be used. I'm gonna jump into how we can, I'm gonna deep dive a little bit into downtime analysis so that instead of a daily brief, what we're gonna look at is how is um, how can AI really dive into um, uh, a deep dive around um, analysis? Let me jump in here. Sorry, I thought I had that ready. Um, let's see, here's manufacturing. So scheduling, downtime analysis. There we go. So in downtime analysis, uh, what we're doing here is this is giving you an overview of your downtime analysis, but you can run this on a daily basis uh, or at whatever interval you want. And the way this works is we ingest the data and we have multiple ways to ingest the data. And this should be true of any AI system you're gonna work with. I'll talk a little bit more about why our system is particularly use, good at ingesting data, but you, you pull in the data, you can pull it in either through files using a webhook or an FTP or something like that. It's very simple integration. We can talk directly to your SQL database. So if you're storing all your tags in a SQL database, we can pull that out on a scheduled basis. Um, or we can directly talk to, we have an API, REST API, which can, we talk to lots of different systems and that allows you to pull data on a dynamic basis. So what happens at that point, once the data comes in, the AI looks at the data and then it does a summary of that information. Now this is a very sort of uh, rudimentary simple report, can be as fancy as those other ones we were looking at, but it's, it's showing your downtime by categories, et cetera, key findings. Then the AI comes up with hypotheses around root causes, bearing system downgrade, uh, operational process control issues, et cetera, puts those in a Pareto chart so that you can look at what, where you can get the biggest bang uh, for addressing those issues. Then finally, it provides its best answer around how to solve the problems it found. Now, realize the AI has looked at all the books ever written about this, all the articles ever written about this. So it's pulling in all the best practices based on the, your industry and the type of issues that it found. We also can bring in through our data ingest, all of your maintenance records, all of your best practice, your tribal knowledge, all that information of what fixes worked in the past, those types of things. And all of that gets aggregated into a report that tells you, here's your best shot in solving those processes. You then can generate an action plan 
um, that action plan goes and addresses those issues. You can assign your team members, those team members get notified, et cetera, et cetera. And so you have this virtuous loop, a continuous improvement loop around your quality and downtime analysis. And that gives you the ability to uh, actually drive this improvement very, very rapidly. So that's how you can drive uh, uh, analysis like downtime analysis. I'll jump back here uh, to the last one. So this, or to the second to last one, automation and, and automated decision-making. So uh, this is a quick little demo here. So the information here, we're getting machine data in and that data could be coming from SAP or others. And we, we as we talked about, we looked at the movement of issues from solid baseline, everything's running okay, to the tags you're getting starting to cause issues. I'm gonna manually type in uh, 500 here. So this is out of, out of where it should be. And you'll see here, it saves the changes. Once it saves the changes, the dashboards move to over 500, but it also then generates automatic and, and uh, uh, triggers action. So I didn't click on anything there, but it might send a notification to the shift manager. It might actually trigger an NCR or a maintenance request, or you can have human in a loop processes to do this. It also surfaces the SOPs or standard fixes that your team has defined as the best uh, fixes based on the information here. So the idea here is to make intelligent decision-making based on an aggregated uh, group of data. And, and the AI can do this very, very well. You can put human in the loop here. So, okay, this is what I want as an NCR, a maintenance work order, et cetera. Um, and all of that um, becomes part of how you operate and use the AI intelligence to manage and, and improve uh, the process. Now, this can also be done at an individual level, at, let's say something like a Gemba walk. So the AI intelligence can augment the user's work. I'll jump in here and show you a simple example of that uh, around uh, just a simple motion walk and a Gemba walk. So uh, you can do this Gemba walk uh, with an iPad, et cetera. You can say, you know, what, what's the priority? What are the defects you're looking at? You can capture the information or literally with an iPad, just talk to it. So you're capturing information. This is at a very individual level, taking photographs of the issue and then get the AI involved to do analysis. The AI can summarize the information, send out an email to your team, or it can generate analysis and say, based on best practices, here's the issues you have and here's the things that you can do about it. So that individual worker now has a coworker who knows everything about the problems that they are looking at and can suggest best practice. So you upskill your entire workflow and work, uh, workforce and connected workers to be able to drive solutions using AI. Once they edit this and say which ones they want to do, the AI will generate a project plan for them so they can then track it. So you're also using AI analysis at the individual and connected worker level. Um, the last one I'm going to show is just a general uh, process of how you can do the exact same thing with quality data. So in the case of quality, I'm going to jump in here. Um, we call this the inquire process. You're trying to inquire to figure out what's going on. You again, ingest the data. Uh, that data comes in in multiple different data sources as we talked about. You narrow down uh, the scope of what you're trying to do. So you give the AI context of what's your business, what type of manufacturer you are, et cetera. And this process of accessing, giving context, et cetera, is very powerful. Now, in this case, it's really interesting. Based on the data you gave it, the AI suggests a bunch of questions that you should be asking of the data. This is really interesting because often we'll find that um, with our clients, they don't know all the questions they should be asking. So the AI suggests some questions. You can either add those questions to your inquiry or you can add your own. And then over here, um, you can then drive dive down a specific uh, area of inquiry around that particular question. So in this case, um, it's looking for... Um, correlation between environmental factors, temperature, humidity, pressure, et cetera, and defects. The reason it asked that is because the AI already found one. There's a three, you know, 0.3 uh, but, uh, factor in the temperature that's helping or uh, contributing to the issue. So what you do at that point is the AI then does an analysis trying to understand that. Um, it gives you, again, the description of those issues and what might be the correlation. It then ideates solutions uh, to that problem, very similar to the other ones, comes up with hypotheses. You can then add simulations. What's interesting in this one is this simulates the ROI of what would be different uh, of, of doing those suggestions and, and what it would cost likely based on the information you give it and where the ROI. So in this case, it's a three month ROI in enhancing machine calibration. Now it's an estimate, but it's AI helping you decide where you wanna spend your time. And then you can go into an operational summary where 
each one of these issues you're tracking has the automations, the KPIs you're tracking, and the actions you're tracking in a single place. So the idea, again, in um, all of these is to create a virtuous cycle of continuous improvement uh, to drive uh, the processes forward. So you have general analytics. Those analytics can be done at the macro level as well as at the individual worker level. You can tie that in with predictive. Um, so you can not only feed large language models in, but you can feed uh, machine learning and other algorithms into the process to get the predictive going. All of that can be done in a proxy system. Um, we have automated decision-making and human in the loop processes. And again, quality optimization is one that's often talked about, but you can do this for any type of process in your, in your manufacturing plant. You can do it for quality. You can do it for downtime analysis. You can do it for lead time around your uh, supply chain or optimization of your warehouse. All of these data processes can be optimized through AI. Um, I want to just take one second on the data side. Often people get, and it's it's a good reason to get scared around the data side because um, the latest data says 60 to 70% of the time is generally used in data preparation. Um, and, and that's a real problem because you're not getting value out of it You know when you've got a bunch of data scientists or your IT team trying to clean the data. Praxy has a really unique technology in this that helps eliminate probably 50% of that work. Uh, we have multiple ways to get at the data. I mentioned those where we can uh, connect with webhooks and FTPs. We can connect with REST APIs, our SQL connector, or uh, MQTT data straight from machine data as well. So all of these are ways that we can connect the data. Now, what's interesting and different about our system versus others is that traditional full stack development requires that you have these relational database components you have to do ETL for data cleansing, business rules. It's a very complex process to get the entire system to work. And 99% of the industry works in this way on the left. We created a unique data structure where we have a NoSQL database on the bottom. So we don't have to structure all of these tables and do the standard ETL. Everything gets normalized into a giant data grid. We then can use our AI on top of that. And the AI understands the difference between New York City or NYC or the Big Apple it understands that all of that is New York City. And so that, that's an example of the type of thing that you would generally have to cleanse, but in our case, you do not. And so there's a huge amount of that cleansing that the, our, our, this model helps you solve and get to the value that you really are trying to do uh, with AI. So this is just another view of that kind of data grid, access the data, um, analyze it, and then automate into your, um, into your user interface. So that, that's basically it. We kept you at, uh, uh, we're just a little under 20 minutes. Hopefully you guys got some value out of that. Um, and if you have any questions or would like to talk more, this is my email address, uh, Michael Lynch at Praxy.com. We'd love to talk with you and hopefully uh, uh, this was worth uh, your 20 minutes. Thank you guys for joining.